Lauren Parker. I'm a Gold Premier Leader, and I'm here today to talk to you about engaging online to build your posh business. So we all know from the very beginning, the most important part of building a posh business is building relationships, making connections. Um, we are in direct selling and sometimes called social selling or network marketing. And all of those words um, imply that we have to be social. We have to network. We have to get ourselves in front of new people all the time. And social media is a great place to do that. And sometimes it's the only place we can do that. Um, so we want to be thinking about our presence online as our as our branding. Yes, we sell perfectly posh. Yes, many of us maybe even have logos for our businesses. But the primary thing to keep in mind is that you are your brand. Your face is your brand, your voice is your brand, your specific way of doing things, your specific way of providing service to your customers. All of that is your brand. Um, and so we want to always think when we're online that we are presenting the person first, who we are, and the product second or even third. Um, we want to be thinking about we are a person who loves posh, not a person who sells posh because people want to buy from people that they don't want to be sold to. And I know that we all have had experiences, both good and bad, with other people in direct sales companies. So there are a lot of tips and tricks you can take uh, for what to do and what not to do right there. Um, so one of the things that I like to consider one of the first steps, whether you're just starting out or you're just starting to reevaluate the way you run your business on social media, is to identify your value add. So what can you provide customers? What can you do to make customers' days better? What kind of feelings do you want to inspire in your customers when they think of you? Um, and when I say customers, uh, it's current customers and prospective customers who are also prospective hostesses and teammates, um, you want to think about what you want your brand to be. And it doesn't have to be, there are a lot of great resources for learning about your brand and what you want that to be, but it doesn't have to be that thoroughly thought out. I'm just thinking about how you want to be perceived by others. Um, everything you do online should connect back to this because everything you do online is visible by someone. Um, so I, I definitely, I'm going to talk mostly about Facebook just because that's where I do the most of my business. Um, and on Facebook, there are filters. And this is something I like to share with everyone. Um, it is possible to still share news articles and talk about politics or be negative and complain about something horrible that happened in your life and still run your business online. And the way to do that is to create groups and then filter them. So when you post, you can choose your audience. You can choose whether all of your friends can see it or you can choose all of your friends accept acquaintances. So there are some great tools in the help menu on Facebook that will help you learn how to use those filters. Um, and that way it's not limiting. You don't need to have two separate accounts. Um, that's just so much to keep up with. Um, and that way you can have your own personal relationships, use Facebook for personal reasons and also have a business. Um, because when it comes to posting, there are three things I always like to remind people that we want to have in our posts. We want to be authentic, we want to be engaging, and we want to be professional. And this is speaking just in regards to the posts you allow people to see um, who are on your team or customers or potentials. Um, when you post something, you need to check through all three of those. Am I being authentic? Am I being engaging? Is this interesting? Um, can people relate to this maybe? And am I being professional? You don't want to vague book, if you don't, that is just passive posting. Um, you don't want to be complaining a lot. You don't want to be seeking attention in a negative way. And if that's something you really feel like you need to do, again, filter out those people that you don't want to see that. Um, something you do want to do is share peaks into your life. You can share negative things that happen, but you want to have a positive spin or um, ask other people if they've been there and have them share their stories. You can talk about struggles that are relatable without making it something that somebody might want to unfollow. Um, you can be vulnerable. People like that. That's authentic. It can be engaging, but you still want to remain professional when you do that. And if you're not sure, ask an upline or ask someone else on your team to review what you're planning on posting to make sure that it's still professional. Um, you also want to use engagement posts. Which is something that we talk about in Posh a lot is engagement posts. Um, when people first think about that, the first thing that comes to mind are posts that have like a choice, A, B, C, or D, or you know, which one of these fruits do you relate with most? <laughs> which, how do you like to 
take your coffee? How do you like to eat your bananas? Um, and people can really quickly answer the question and scroll on. It doesn't take a lot of thought, but a lot of people, for whatever reason, will interact on those posts. And I kind of know the reason. People like to talk about themselves. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Um, but knowing that, people post those posts and get a lot of engagement and they know that on Facebook that boosts the algorithm. That means um, every time someone comments on a post of yours, um, and sometimes when they react, but mostly commenting, it's telling Facebook they wanna see more of what you post. So that's great if you wanna be in their feeds more often. But I'd like to talk a little bit more about organic engagement. Um, there are times when you're on Facebook, you post something funny that your kid did or something that really inspired you that day. And it happens to get a lot of likes, a lot of comments, people seem to really enjoy it. That was organic engagement. It, it had nothing to do with Posh, most likely. Um, <clears throat> but that means that within the next hour or two, you can do another post that maybe does subtly bring Posh into play on your personal page, or if this occurred in your VIP group, in your VIP group. Um, without being salesy, without giving your website, without giving a price, just talking about an experience you had with Posh, uh, something Posh helped you with. Um, and because those people interacted with your page and commented on that previous post, they're more likely to see this next one. So you're, you're capitalizing on something that happened on, it, on its own um, and making sure that you know, you're keeping your business in mind when you're on social media because that's a great opportunity and why pass that up? Um, so you want to, as I've said, use your face, um, your voice and your face or your brand. So use your own testimonies. Um, people are interested in seeing the products in the context of a ritual or a routine or in terms of problem solving. They might want to know one or two ingredients and in what they do. Um, they don't want a sales graphic that lists all of those things and tells them what's on sale. That just isn't why people are on Facebook. They're not there to buy things, though they will buy so many things. I know that personally, um, but that's not why they came there. So you have to be subtle. You have to be delicate with that. Um, sell yourself and your relationship first and the sales usually will follow. Um, so when you're posting, you also want to be consistent. Um, post at least once or twice a day, both in your personal page and in your VIP group. Um, do not overpost. There's definitely a delicate balance there. When people are posting constantly, um, people stop reading all of the posts. They sort of could start tuning you out because it's a constant noise. So quality over quantity. Be really intentional with your posting and take a lot of the things I'm saying today into consideration. Um, you can read, there are other resources all over about branding and online presence. Um, and lots of great trainings from other leaders. Take all of that into consideration and focus more on the quality of the posts that you put up. Um, one last thing about posting before I move on to more specifics about communication. Um, when you're posting, it's always good to think about the four reasons people join Posh. Um, because every time you talk about Posh, it is an action that could work toward building your team or recruiting. Um, so, you don't wanna ignore that when you're sharing about the products. You also wanna share about the business. And there are ways to do that without being like, who wants to join my team? I'm screaming into the void. <laughs> I'm not asking anyone in particular. Um, there are ways to appeal to people and sell to people that are indirect by just talking about your experience. Um, so the four reasons people wanna join, entrepreneurship is the first one, something of their own. Um, they, people want their own business, they want to set their own schedule, they want to be the master of their own destiny, the determiner of their paycheck, um, they want to make money of their own um, or experience recognition. Um, another reason people might join is for the connection and the community. Um, the friendships that we have here, the happy mail from a, a teammate or someone they've never met who is their upline. Um, going to events and experiencing the connection you have, meeting all these people you've never met in real life or reconnecting with old friends in real life and having so much fun. Um, the products are made in the USA. That is uh, you know, our largest community and it's very patriotic and really great for our fellow citizens that all of our products are made in the United States. Um, and then anything that's inspiring or motivating about the business is speaking to our community. So when you speak about any of those things, you are appealing to someone who maybe is looking for those things. Um, 
The third reason people a lot of times join, um, probably the most popular, is the products, the pampering experience, the quality of ingredients. So anytime you're talking about your own experience, your own enjoyment of the products, or uh, a story about a customer who had a great experience, you are selling the idea of potentially doing this themselves um, and being able to potentially give that to the people that they know. Um, so some other keywords in that category I have are, you know, selling yourselves, the products sell, sell you and the products sell themselves by sampling. People love to get mail. Um, it's great to be the person who gets to send happy mail. And it's great to get the product on the people because a lot of times trying is all people needed. Um, and the fact that by owning a business like this, we it, find it a little bit easier to prioritize me time when we're doing it right um, because we have to try all the products how are we gonna tell people what's amazing about them if we haven't tried them um, worst job ever um, and the last one is the value the discount the profit this is one that we have to be delicate with we don't necessarily want to be just bringing in people who want to buy a kit and never do anything with their business but talking about the kit value talking about the value of the products some people are just money oriented um, and they they like to think about the fact that most of the products are under $25, that they can earn perks and hostess rewards on top of commissions. They can um, extend some of those things and use them in their business to leverage um, other rewards instead of their commissions to keep building. Like They don't have to put all of the money back into their business right away because we have other rewards they can use to grow their businesses. Um, so just think about all four of those things. Try to touch on one of them every time you talk about posh um, and maybe shy away from talking more about sales. So the typical thing people say is 80-20. 80% you, your life, who you are, um, and 20% specifically about sales and selling. So as I'm closing up, a couple of tips on communication um, online, some quick ways that you can reach out to people um, that you may not already do. Um, in parties, make sure you're chit-chatting in the comments. Try to comment on other people's posts on, that they post on their page. People love that recognition of being seen um, and knowing they're not screaming in the void when they post. And then they'll associate you with someone who makes them feel good because you're actually listening. Um, you want to make sure that you are finding opportunities to private message or DM people who you are interacting with or potential customers or current customers or potential teammates um, because that also boosts the algorithm. The more you talk in Facebook Messenger, the more likely they are to see your posts on Facebook um, because again, it's prioritizing them in the algorithm. It's telling Facebook that the two of you want to see each other's stuff. Um, and you want to pay attention to spelling and grammar, pay attention to your tone. You can use emojis to express some of your tone. Don't go to town because that's really distracting and some people just skip right past it because it's hard to read. Um, but they are great at, at showing your feeling, using smiley faces, an exclamation point here or there. Um, things that help people understand that you're excited or that you're happy um, when you, my like, example I like to give is if someone's birthday, writing happy birthday with a period sounds like happy birthday. But if you put an exclamation point, that's nice, happy birthday. And that's the kind of person someone wants in their life and that's how they wanna be celebrated. Um, and last, use Posh Pro. <laughs> CRMs, uh, customer relationship management systems are amazing because they help you be consistent. You don't have to keep track of when the last time you talked to somebody was. Um, who you need to follow up with. It does all of that for you and you can set templates so you don't have to think of fresh language every time. You can just tweak it each time so you don't sound like a robot. Um, but it's a way to work smart and hard. It takes a whole bunch off your plate to not have to keep track of that in your head. And Posh is giving it to us, connected right to our VO. I mean, $7 a month is a steal. Um, and just make sure you pick a system that works for you, that you enjoy, that you can follow, because if you pick a system that you don't like, that doesn't suit your personality, you're not gonna follow through with it. And so it's not gonna keep you organized. So keep trying new things until you find something that works for you. Um, and last, obviously, have fun. It's one of our values at Posh, and people can tell if you're having fun with your business. It's engaging to see people enjoying themselves, and a lot of people are looking for something to enjoy in their own lives. Um, and it builds curiosity. People want to know more about something that gets people excited. So meet people, be authentically yourself, 
build real relationships, focus on how you can help them, not how they can help you. Um, try to think about how you uniquely can fulfill a need for them and make their lives better. Um, just spread joy because right now we all need it. We always all need it, but especially lately, um, people need reminders to care for themselves. They need excuses to, to take care of themselves and so do we. Um, it's our time to show people what self-care is all about. We are self-care specialists. So go out there and spread that love. We all deserve it.